Hello, my name is Jean Kamvar. I'm the Lesson Infrastructure Developer at The Carpentries. If you have contributed to one of our lessons in the past, this video is for you. And first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for contributing to our lessons. Uh, this is the whole reason why we are able to have our lessons. And second, in May 2023, our lessons are going to transition to the, a lesson infrastructure known as the Workbench. And this is important for you because in order to contribute in the future, you will need to refork your lesson. This video will show you how to delete and refork your fork of the lesson. And it will also demonstrate some common missteps if you don't delete and refork your lesson. This can be kind of confusing. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me or anyone on the uh, curriculum core team of the Carpentries. Uh, and I hope this video is informative. So first up, I'm going to show you how to delete and refork your lesson repository so you can get set up for contributing to a lesson that has recently transitioned. Right after the repository transition, you're going to see something that looks like this on your fork, where everything looks normal. You still have the styles uh, layout, but you get a notification that says your branch is a whole bunch of commits ahead of the GH Pages branch. And this is an indicator that you need to delete your fork uh, because the history has changed. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The first thing that you need to do is go over to the settings tab all the way up here in the top left, right. You click on it and then you take your scroll bar and you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page in this place called the danger zone. And uh, you want to look to the very bottom and says, delete your repository. And don't worry, we're going to refork right after this. So you want to hit this delete this repository button, but of course, uh, GitHub wants to make sure that you actually want to delete it. And it's going to tell you that this is going to delete your repository and everything that goes along with it. And it asks you to type your repository name to confirm. And once you have typed your repository name, the button will be enabled and you can click it to delete the repository. Once you have deleted your fork, you are now ready to refork the repository and contribute. To start, head over to the Carpentries lesson repository. Now that you've deleted your fork, you can recreate your fork. And to do this, you would do the same thing you normally would do with any other GitHub repository. Go to the source repository and click on the fork button here. Now, if you wanted to create a fork for teaching, um, one thing that you want to do is to uncheck this copy the main branch only box. Uh, but for now, we're only contributing, so we can go ahead and just create this fork. And it takes a couple of seconds. But there you have your fork. And now we have a sandpaper or, and now we have a workbench version of the lesson. And we can make our contribution now. And you can see now that pull request pre-flight checks have, have started. And in a couple of seconds, we're going to have a comment here that's going to show us that hey, the pre-flight checks have passed and uh, that the maintainer should be able to uh, approve and run the workflows. And now what I would like to show you is what can happen if you try to make a change without reforking your repository. Take, for instance, a situation where you would want to create a pull request that updates one thing in an episode. So you can already see here, this is a fork that has uh, been created after the transition. So let's say you wanted to edit something in an episode. And here, what you see is that you're not allowed to make a pull request here. Even though all you changed was one line, um, it says, hey, fish tree attempt GH pages and uh, your patch are entirely different commit histories. So what you might think is, okay, I have an entirely different commit history. That means I need to pull in the changes from upstream. That's what you normally would do with Git. Let me show you why that might not be a good idea. So I'm going to go back to my 
fork, I see that I need to synchronize my fork. And it says, hey, you have a lot of, you have a lot of commits. You can update your branch. I'll go ahead and do that. And Git will happily do this for me. And now I can uh, go ahead and uh, go back into episodes. I can go here and I can make my change. And one of the things that you can see here is that, again, I'm trying to pull into GH pages, but I can see that, wait a minute, I only made one commit, but I'm merging in 1065. That is my first indication that something's wrong. My next indication that something's wrong is that the pull request closed in a few seconds. I'm gonna scroll down uh, to see the comment that appeared. The GitHub bot has told me that the GH pages branch is no longer editable. That means that I can't make any changes. I can't propose any changes to that. Um, and it gives me instructions of what I should do if I want to contribute further. And the, the instructions are to delete my fork and create a new one. The last thing to note is that there is a transition guide from styles to the workbench. This transition guide provides details about the differences between uh, the old lesson template and the workbench. This includes infrastructure, uh, include, it includes information about how to render it, information about the changed folder structure, and information about uh, the differences in syntax. So to review, we wanted to make a change in the upstream repository so we made an edit in a new branch and tried to make a pull request. We couldn't make the pull request. And the reason why we couldn't make the pull request was because the git commit history had changed. GitHub allowed us to try and merge the upstream branch into our own, even though it had a different history. And this is why it's important to refork your repository if you want to make a change. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, and I'm leaving some resources in the links below. Thank you very much.